Good evening, everyone. Welcome to tonight's Board of Selectmen meeting for October 7th, 2014. We're, we are going to enter right into executive session, session at 6.30, uh, returning at 7 p.m. Can I have a motion, please, to go into executive session? I move that the Board of Selectmen enter into executive session. Um, the topic is Great Divide Litigation. We're meeting with Attorney John Davis and Attorney Douglas Lewison. Um, and we will return to regular session at the conclusion of executive session. Also to read the minutes. Oh, and also, yeah, we're going to uh, go over the executive session minutes from July 22nd, August 5th, August 19th, and September 9th. A second motion. All those in favor? Aye. Roll call? Uh, yes. 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 Right. Thank you. Good evening. Welcome back to the Board of Selectmen's meeting for Tuesday, October 7th. We've just completed our executive session. Um, we'll start off, I'll read the agenda. We'll start off at 7 p.m. with the citizens' input. Topics not reasonably anticipated by the chair 48 hours in advance of the meeting. 7.05 p.m. Selectmen's update. 7.15 p.m. Public hearing. Uh, reserve bin Antonia's Deli. Transfer of an annual wine and malt license. 7.30 p.m., the board will have a discussion about the alcohol compliance checks. At 7.45, the board will discuss the uh, special town meeting draft warrant articles. 8.15, there will be an update on the town hall working group presented by uh, Bill Keegan. David can't be with us this evening. And then at 8.25, Bill will provide us with a town manager update. John, can you lead us through the pledge? Mm -hmm. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Any citizens input this evening? No? Laura? Chairman, if I could? Sure. Thank you. Come on up. I just wanted to report to the board that Hugs Foxboro is going to be running uh, their annual walk on October 18th. Uh, it will be held this year at the Public Safety Building. And uh, the event itself starts at 10 o'clock. Uh, registration starts at 9. And the route of the walk, so to speak, uh, is uh, on the sidewalks that lead from uh, the Garden of Courage where the event will start that uh, many of you have seen and uh, actually were at on Founders Day when it was dedicated. And it will go to North Street, stay on the sidewalk on North Street, Payson Road, and back up Payson Road to the uh, area of the garden. Uh, we're also going to have a uh, display from New Hope um, as part of the project, as well as uh, a touch a truck event for uh, younger people in town if families do want to you know, bring children for it. Uh, so I just wanted to update the board on uh, a really positive proje project that citizen volunteers are really involved in, especially where October is Domestic Violence Prevention Month. Uh, that's why they're taking part in this effort. Thank, Thank you. Steve. Thank Thanks you. very much. All right. Um, I'll provide a selectman's update. I'd like to start off by welcoming Mary Beth Bernard, our new assistant town manager, her first official meeting, Thank second you. day. Yes, Very happy too. to have you here. Thank you very much. And she hasn't left yet. That's a good sign. <laughs> <laughs> good thing. That's right. So welcome. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, also wanted to mention that we have a notice that there will be a special memorial service uh, for the firefighters on November 19th at St. Mary's at 11 a.m followed by an awards ceremony at the McGinty Room uh, at 12.15. So I just wanted to mention. I'm sorry. I thought it was October. Is it October? It's October 19th. I'm sorry. I read that wrong. October 19th, thank you. Mm -hmm. And um, so make sure you're there that day instead. Mm -hmm. And then also, um, just wanted to mention to the board, we have a request for a uh, joint meeting with the school committee regarding um, a budget discussion and also uh, especially the um, proposal for a joint maintenance 
budget approach. Mm -hmm. So we're looking at if anyone's available to attend. We're trying to get a quorum for either Monday, November 10th, or um, Tuesday, November 25th. I was going to uh, offer those two days back. So I just want to make sure we could get a quorum for the 10th before I. Uh, yeah, my preference is the 10th. The 10th. Okay. Either Should one. I Jim, we'll I, I don't know. Free. I gotta check my work schedule. Okay, we'll I'll, I'll try to move it. We'll have a quorum. Be available yeah. on the tenth. Okay, great. Thanks. And so it's October tenth or November tenth. November. November tenth. Yeah. Okay. Yep. okay. So I think we're a little bit of ahead of schedule here by about ten minutes, so we can go through some action items. Um, the first item is a grant acceptance for the uh, police department. This is a grant for $5,000 from the Executive Office of Public Safety to continue the efforts to mitigate underage drinking. Did you want to speak to this, Chief? Uh, uh, I had <coughs> intended to, Ms. Cola, but uh, as I mentioned, I think in the memo, uh, Sergeant Noonan has taken on responsibility both for obtaining grants so that we can uh, continue our efforts to uh, mitigate underage drinking, as it says. And uh, he takes certainly uh, a positive view about working uh, with the establishments. And uh, I know that uh, it's really needed money because our budgets are stretched anyway for other programs. So it's really crucial to our ongoing efforts uh, to target the underage drinking problem in our community. Okay. Thank you. Chief, is this like a, a continuation of grants similar to this that you've had in the past? Correct. Uh, for the last several years, we've been able to uh, utilize these funds through the grant process. And it's based on the size of the community in terms of total population. Uh, so we're getting the same money as other communities our size. Uh, but uh, as with any state grant, uh, there's a tremendous amount of paperwork uh, both in order to obtain the grant and then to report the findings of the outcomes. That's what I was going to ask you. Is, that, is there a metric by which you measure the effectiveness of this program? Well, I, I think it assists with all our liquor establishments uh, of having uh, the compliance checks and the other programs that are done that hopefully uh, you know, bring about, again, compliance with uh, the issue of underage drinking and our rules and regulations that we have for liquor establishments. So. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so I move that the Board of Selectmen approve the acceptance of the $5,000 grant from the Executive Office of Public Safety to the Fox Road Police Department to be used to mitigate underage drinking. I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Um, the next item is a. Uh, um, uh, this is similar to one we had last month. The uh, legislation had passed allowing um, um, liquor, liquor stores to open at 10 a.m. on Sundays. Previously, it had been noon on Sundays. The legislation passed, and the requirement is that the individual liquor, establish, liquor store has to um, uh, ask for a ask for a change of um, hours and there's a regular application for that so this is what this is this is the application for change of hours for uh, Gulf Resources so I'll read the motion I move that the board of selectmen approve the application of Gulf Resources Incorporated 20 Washington Street to mend the hours of operation to a 10 a.m. Sunday opening as of October 25th 2014 I'll second that any discussion all those in favor Aye. Aye. Um, the next is a series of gift acceptances. Um, I move that the Board of Selectmen approve the acceptance of a do donation of $100 to the Animal Control Office by Bonnie and Brian Goodwin. This is for the adoption of King. I'll second that emotion with a dog, uh, I guess. Let's we'll the dog. King the dog. Yeah. Yeah. I'll second that with gratitude. Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, the next one is a donation to the uh, Recreation Department for the uh, repair and maintenance of the uh, skate park. 
This was a, uh, this donation, well, I'll do the motion. I move that the Board of Selectmen approve the acceptance of a donation of $4,148.02 from various donors through GoFundMe.com as presented to the Recreational Department Recreation Department by Joseph Earhart for the repair and maintenance of the skateboard park. And I want to thank all the donors for their um, donations. Debbie, did you want to comment on that? There was this? just one other um, addition to that. Thank you. Um, Foxville Recreation had received checks itself, one from the Foxville Fishing Game and one from Mr. and Mrs. Michael Stanton. That's the rest came. Yeah, with that. That's Those separate are two separate. Item, yeah. Oh, you separated separate. them. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. And I'll, I'll second that motion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. The next one is for uh, acceptance donation acceptance to the recreation department. Mm -hmm. I move that the board of selectmen approve the acceptance of a two hundred dollar donation to the recreation department from Michael and Nancy Stanton to the skate park project and thank them for their donations. I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Uh, th the third one is I move that the Board of, Se board of Selectmen approve the acceptance of a $200 donation to the Recreation Department from Foxborough Fish and Game for the Skate pa Project and thank Fish and Game for their donation. I'll second that and thank you to the members of the Foxborough Fish and Game Club. Very generous. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. And the next one is for the Boyd Library. I move that the Board of Selectmen approve the acceptance of a $25 donation to the Board and Library for the purchase of a memorial book um, from the Foxborough Garden Club and thank them for their uh, donation. I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Madam Chair, members of the Board, I just, there was another item we talked about today with, with Debbie that. I just want to mention it to the board because they, we're not sure if it's going to happen yet, but it's dealing with, uh, they, they may be utilizing some space at the Snyder facility, one of the Snyder facilities okay. for a dance uh, this week. I just want to bring the, to the board's attention that it's a, this is like a form of a gift as well for use of that space. Mm -hmm. So I just want you to be aware of that and uh, because they, we're still working out the details of that and when that's going to happen and it, may, it will happen before your next meeting. So I want you to be aware of that as well. Can they put a value on that? There's no value, but it's just it's just it's a form of a gift. So I just wanted you to bring it to your attention. Just want to thank Snyder. Just thank like Snyder for that yeah. use. Thank you. If we can work it out, okay. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Debbie, is this the dances that they've been doing traditionally in the past few years? Yes, the, the ones we we haven't done them for four or five years, and we always did them with Invensis. This is in the cafeteria. The okay. Coffee cafeteria, yep. and yeah. um, they generously donated their space. Invensis slash Snyder is um, hopefully we're going to be having them again. There's just a change in paperwork, yeah. as there is would, yeah. would be with the change of company, and we'll know by nine o'clock tomorrow morning whether or not um, we're trying to work It's going to be held still; yeah. it just may not be there. Yeah, great. Thank you. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. Um, can I have time to go through the minutes here. Um, Couple minutes. Okay, the first minutes for September 19th. I move that the Board of Selectmen approve the September 19th, 2014 meeting minutes as is or as amended. September 9th? September 9th. September 9th. Right. September 9th. Yeah, September 9th. You said 19th. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. September 9th. It's okay. I'll, I'll second that, Judy. Yeah. And uh, changes in yeah, discussion? Yeah, changes on page 9. Mm -hmm. um, it indicates that there were two separate votes for the. Um, Warrant article. So the third, there's two, sen two sentences and then a paragraph that says, motion was made by John Gray to accept the 11 items. Um, and it was a five to nothing vote. And then four paragraphs down, it said there was another vote four to one. Um, I did go back and look at the tape. There, was, there wasn't a, the initial vote of five to nothing. I think it's confusion with the other vote. So I would strike that paragraph and leave the other one that said it was a 410. Um, so strike the 11 item? If that's okay with the board. I, I, Are they the, the same, uh, Jim? I mean, this was to, because this is the open and close. Right. Right, yep. and this was this to the accept list. the list. But there was never a vote on that. Um, on, there was never a 5-0 vote. So you started to make the motion, then it transferred into open and close the town 
Did we open more closer to add Article 8? Is that why we did that? No, nope, that was at a different yeah, meeting. Different that meeting. was the was building height that was yeah. added. Was okay. Okay. So that was a discussion happened. where um, mm -hmm. I, I thought there was just too many articles. Right, and, right, and right. So there was a f four to one zero, but there was never a five zero. Okay, so did the tape say that I made the motion, we just didn't vote on it? Was that part accurate? Uh, yeah, but it went to discussion, I think, after that. Right? There, was, there was no second. It, it kind of got muddied up. So mm -hmm. there was no, it, it, no, the, the vote, the motion never carried forward into anything other okay, than so what it wasn't relevant. We just, it wasn't we just relevant. Strike okay. So we'll strike that, that one. Okay. Yep. okay. Any other changes? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 You want to do the next one? Yeah, we'll just do the last one. Um, I move that the board uh, selectmen approve the September 23rd, 2014 meeting minutes as is or as amended. I'll second that. Discussion? Any corrections? Yeah, on page 10, um, there's a statement that's attributed to me, but I think Jim said it. It was about the, um, uh, that, that the value of licenses, if more licenses come into the town, it would diminish the value of the license held by current mm -hmm. owners. Um, I think that was a topic you were covering. I think that was. Yeah. That was <coughs> they recall it that way too. Yeah, yeah, another. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, okay. the, I think the, the the first part is mine. The second part mm -hmm. is Jim's. Okay. And that it wasn't so much that it would diminish it. It was just it, it needed some discussion mm -hmm. to understand the the, uh, the topic of more liquor licenses. So we we'll strike your name and put Jim's name in there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any other? That was all I had. Mm -hmm. All set? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Job done. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The next item on the agenda is uh, at 7.15. We have a public hearing scheduled for the reserve bin slash Antonia's Deli, transfer of an annual wine and malt liquor license. <laughs> Do you need to to read? Okay, sure. Thank you. Uh, legal notice. The Board of Selectmen of the Town of Foxborough, acting as a local licensing authority pursuant to Mass General Laws Chapter 138, will conduct a public hearing on Tuesday, October 7th, 2014, at 7.15 p.m. in the Foxborough High School Media Center, 120 South Street, Foxborough, Mass., on application for a transfer of an annual wine and malt beverages package store license from the reserve bin incorporated to Antonia's International Foods Incorporated DBA Antonia's Deli manager Giacomo uh, Torricello with a location at 369 Central Street Foxboro Mass premises is approximately 3,500 square feet space with 1,500 square feet dedicated to retail sales, including 200 square feet for the sale of wine and malt beverages. All interested parties are invited to attend the hearing. Good evening. Um, good Welcome. Evening. Uh, attorney good evening. Frank Splain, I have the applicant. Uh, with me here is uh, Jack Tosiello, uh, who will be the manager on uh, the local license. Um, is again, uh, request for a transfer from the reserve bin, which is located at 369 Central Street to Antonio's Deli, Antonio's International Foods, and also located at 369 uh, Central Street. Uh, this is all, everyone in town understands it as Foxfield Plaza. Um, so it's not really moving locations, just down a few doors. Um, the uh, Antonio's Deli right now is operated as a uh, restaurant, delicatessen. You can go in and get prepared foods to either eat on site uh, or to take home uh, or eat off site. Um, at this time, the Reserve Bin uh, Inc. is looking to transfer it out of its own name, and Antonio Delis wants to take over uh, the liquor license. Uh, the Reserve Bin, regardless of the transfer, will probably eventually uh, close its door at the site, so retain this liquor license at uh, 369 Central Street. Antonio Deli uh, currently does not have any kind of liquor license. In the past, it did have a on-site um, uh, liquor license for beer and wine. However, uh, approximately two years ago, uh, it let it lapse. It held it for about seven years. 
Um, in the end, it didn't uh, seem profitable to retain it, and with the liability, it decided to let it lapse. This will be a different type of a liquor license, again, off-premise consumption, and what they're trying to do is to um, build a clientele who will come in on site uh, to, to uh, purchase prepared foods, to eat at home, and at the same time, hopefully be, buy some wine that will go well with uh, that meal or some craft beers. Um, there is a little bit of relationship between the two ownership, Reserve Ben uh, and Antonio Deli's. Um, Jack's wife owns Reserve Ben. Um, Jack and his parents uh, own and um, run Antonio's Deli, so they like to keep it uh, within the site and within the family. But again, uh, their long-term plan is hopefully to enlarge um, their client base with their prepared foods. I think everyone here is um, knowledgeable about the site. It's uh, had a few um, redevelopment plans brought forward, but nothing to date uh, has come forward. Whenever they've met with developers, it's always been known that they want to stay on site. Um, all the tenants there now are on a at-will basis because of that development. You know, any new developer is going to want to have that ability. Um, you know, to start a new. And um, any new developer would pretty much triple or even higher any new rent. So they're looking also to the future where any new development there, they would really try to enlarge their footprint, enlarge what uh, would be available to their customers. Um, again, centering on prepared uh, meals and food for the clients, and with that, uh, the bear and wine. Thank you. Any questions from the board? Yeah, Frank, I, I'm just, I, I know the store, I, and I'm just thinking, when you walk into the, the, the food serving part of it, Will there be display cases where you go to a counter and you're choosing lasagna and you can see a display case with wine? Is that how it's going to be set up? Or is it going to be a separate package store inside of the food establishment? It, uh, when you uh, walk in the main entrance, which is to the left, um, you walk up to the uh, counter. On the left right there are non-alcoholic beverages. They'll stay non-alcohol. And you go up to the counter and order. The um, Wine and beer will be over to the right. There will be um, beer behind the counter, which you can request. There will be wine in front, though, that you can pick up and look at and read the descriptions on. So it will be allocated out. The non-alcohol beverages will stay where they are to the uh, left when you walk in. And uh, beer and wine, for now, will be over to the right. But I'm assuming it's not going to be the same type of inventory that the reserve bin carried. No, okay. not not at this time. No. Um, hopefully, in the future, with the redevelopment, um, their footprint and redevelop would be larger, and uh, they hope that uh, the footprint for the retail portion for the beer and wine would also increase. Uh, because right now, there's no real foot traffic there. If somebody goes uh, to that site, it's for one reason, one reason only. You know, it doesn't draw in other, any other customers. Um, hopefully in redevelopment, uh, there would be more foot traffic. Uh, so that's what they're hoping. Any questions, Jim? Um, probably under discussion, but not, not questions. Oh, oh, I, go ahead, Jim. Oh, I, um, I had asked Sandra, uh, I asked Sandra uh, Herman in the, in the, um, Selectman's office about this, and um, this is definitely all it is is retail sales for beer and wine. Correct. Correct. Yeah. And as you, right now, when you go in, as you explained, on the left is the cooler with the Coca Cola and the root beer and all that stuff. <coughs> and I said to Sandra, I said, so this, what, this license does not allow someone to order a sub and then order beer and sit down and have a beer. Correct. Or, no, because not. she said, and I just want to explain this to to, be, to the audience great audience that we have um, that would be a bring your own booze uh, situation and the town of Foxborough doesn't allow that so all this is is just setting up a retail store for beer and wine correct that's all that's all okay well, I think the concept yeah. is the trying to right make it ma marry the food Ma with wine right sure. right but I mean I just want Do people I have that right 
Yeah, absolutely. But I just want people to realize that they won't be able to grab a beer and sit down and have their sure. have their food there. No, they won't be no. able to do that. Okay. No. Um, Jack, I just want to ask, so you were uh, obviously the manager when you had the liquor license there? Yes. So um, all of your employees would be trained in? Sure. Well, last time we held the license, we had um, we had Campbell and Trent come out, and um, they did a, a class mm -hmm. at a restaurant. And, um, and since then, I think I attended at least one that was at the public safety building. <coughs> You know, so I, I think they, they might be available throughout um, throughout the years. I think there one was available. I'm not sure, but you know that's who the the town recommended. That's who we used in the past. Okay. Yeah. Well, how many employees do you have? Uh, right now, eight. Okay. So you could work with Chief O'Leary to figure out uh, training if needed for your staff. Sure, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. All right, great. Yeah. Any other questions? have a motion to close the hearing please I move that we close the hearing on the transfer of the annual wine and malt beverage liquor license from reserve bin to Antonia's deli I'll second the motion all those in favor Aye. Okay. discussion um, yeah what I like about this application is uh, and, and I'm familiar with Antonia's deli it's a family run business um, very sincere people and impeccable reputation um, on the wine bin, uh, that area is a very difficult place to do business because, as the attorney said, people drive through, either, they either cut through or they stop for a destination and they go. Um, the wine bin, you know, it came up as when Trader Joe's came up, and there's a lot of competition. So yeah. we, we, I think it's a situation where we've got one license and you're just sliding it over, so we're not creating a new license. But what I like about it is you had that different license where you could serve in your restaurant in the past, and I don't think there was any issues, and they decided that it wasn't for them. You know, they didn't want to go in that direction and, and have the alcohol more part of the business than the food. So I think you've stayed true to what you do um, on, on the food. And I think it's nice to go in there and do takeout because a lot of people take to go takeout and grab a bottle of wine uh, or beer when you're leaving and not have to drink it at the restaurant. And I looked at the map, the retail layout that you did, and it's it's not grandiose shelves. It's basically in your food container at the front. Sure. You're yeah. taking the dessert, sliding it over, and you're putting some wine and some beer. So, yeah. um, you know, I got a little ang anxious when I when I saw this coming on the the heel of nine liquor violations. How this mm -hmm. board was going to handle it, um, but actually, this was a. I think this is a very good proposal, and I think it fits well with that area. And I wish you luck. Thank you, so. John. Yeah, actually, uh, along those lines, I think the, by, by ma you're making a complete meal, by mating wine with, with food, and I think your focus is food, um, it, it should make for a pretty good business and hopefully it drives some more traffic towards you. Thank you. Jim? No, fine. Good luck. Thanks. Jack, I just want to mention that uh, just this past weekend, I went to visit my son at college at the University of Hartford and brought him a tray of your meatballs. It's like li <laughs> liquid gold to these kids. <laughs> so, Didn't last very long, did it? Great food. Yeah. But... Uh, I agree. I think the idea of what you're doing is really a great approach, and hopefully, uh, you'll be very successful with that. Thank you. So, appreciate. It. Um, can I have a motion, motion please? I move, move uh, from the to. Audience. Oh, I'm okay. sorry. Oh no, that was in the public hearing. Oh, okay, you're right. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Go ahead, okay, I move that the board of selectmen approve the transfer of the annual wine and malt beverage package store license from the Reserve Bin Incorporated to Antonia's International Foods Incorporated, DBA Antonia's Deli, at 369 Central Street, Foxboro, Mass. I'll second that motion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Good luck. Thank you. Thanks. Congratulations. Good luck. Hmm? Yeah, it's supposed to be pretty good. I haven't been there either. That's good to know. We'll try it. Yeah, I've had something done. Okay, right on time. Mm -hmm. 7.30. Our next item is a discussion on the alcohol compliance checks. Uh, Chief, if you wanted to come up to the table. Oh, um, okay. I wasn't anticipating any... Uh, <laughs> Actually, I think really we've been advised just to focus on uh, and scheduling, some, scheduling this some dates. and uh, yeah. not to have any discussion uh, about the individual 
uh, right. issues. Right. So. So um, dates that, that the board would like. How the, first of all, I. This is my uh, first, like a violation hearing approach here in this community. So I'm going to take a little bit of your lead in terms of how you've handled them in the past and historically how you've handled them, but. Um, my my recommendation to you is that you try and split up into two nights because there is there is several of them, and you want to give them the proper proper hearing uh, and, and notice. Um, the question then is, um, and I understand that in, in the previous uh, actions of the board, it's, it's been an opportunity to try and work directly with council for the uh, for the violation violators and with towns the towns council to try and understand the, the issues and then present. Uh, uh, some a proposed resolution to the board at, at your at your at your meeting. Mm -hmm. Is that is that the wish of the board at this to continue that approach? Yeah, how would you how would you like to approach? Nine violations. That's correct. I'm sure. just wondering if uh, you know to process four one night and process five the other night. That's a lot. Yeah. And conduct our other business. I'm wondering if sure. It, you go for three it nights. It might take three nights. Yeah. Three each three each night. Can we consider having a separate special meeting for just these violations? Yeah, that, that was and, could. Mm -hmm. and that way, that's all we're focusing on. We could accomplish it. And do you think we can do that in one evening? All, would, all nine in one evening? Yeah, I think tough would be do, even to do yeah. all three, all nine in one night would be. I think you'd have yeah. to do two nights just for that. So what if we do this? We leave it on the Tuesday schedule where we normally meet every other, every other week. And then during the every other week, we'll have the liquor. Hearing so it'll, we'll be meeting every Tuesday, and alternating so, between regular business and liquor. Yeah. So yeah. Maybe, maybe we could do it two nights. Uh, if we did we, four, we might one be able night, to do that. Yeah, I think uh, one of them is a little more problematic than, than others than the others. Yeah. So uh, one of them has a longer history, of course. So we, we may that may take a little more time mm -hmm. to okay. resolve that yeah. one. But um, um, so, so w just one question: you, you had brought it up, and we've had different town managers. I think between. Um, yeah, probably in, in my experience here, three different, one was an interim town manager, but three different ways to handle the liquor violations. Um, one process we had where it was there was d discussions with attorneys and town managers and their counsel outside of the board. Mm -hmm. And when it came to us, it was, it was refined, but it was a little sterile. It was a little, the facts were all kind of negotiating. We just kind of stamped it. Um, I, I personally don't want to go through that again because I, I've seen it doesn't work with some of the um, people that we're having back in front of us. I would rather have the discussion at this table, even if it takes a little longer, and, and have it at this board and not between the two attorneys. Yeah, I'm with um, you. I'd like to air it out. Mm. Uh, I, I agree with that. But, but also, could we have information provided to us? Um, like, I, I understand that each, each establishment has a file with their license and also any um, any inf letters of infractions or anything? Can we have everything that's in those files per the the establishment to look at? You need a, you need a history of the of uh, each the file. history, right? Yeah, yeah I mean, I want to see what's in there. Yeah. Also, can we have if someone has come before us before? Um, can we have a copy of the board of selectmen minutes for the previous um, hearings? Because I want to know what they said the first time. Okay. Okay, and also, the first time that I experienced uh, uh, a hearing, the the young-looking person uh, actually came to the meeting. She was sitting. She was right there. I think the last time all we had was photos. I don't remember the guy, the the, the young man coming. Well, for the the last time that we had a hearing, uh, there were pre uh, as. Mr. Develos mentioned pre-meetings with both the council of uh, the, the previous violators, uh, and they acknowledged the fact that uh, the person that was presented uh, was a uh, a person underage, and that they should have been for all three of the establishments that we had last year. Somebody should have asked some basic questions. So that's why I think in the hearings. That we had last year that only involved three, we didn't actually present evidence to the board as such. Uh, it's much like a court case in which the defendants were pleading uh, guilty uh, or uh, 
nolo contendere, I guess is the no official contest. legal term. Yeah. And, you know, the board then had discussions uh, listening to their mitigation of the penalty phase that the board made decisions on. Uh, certainly, uh, I would have uh, Sergeant Noonan, you know, prepare our witness, mm -hmm. uh, as well as testimony from both him and I believe Officer Fiscaldo worked with him on this project uh, so that we would present uh, viable cases for the board to hear and for you to make independent judgment. Uh, I, I can certainly appreciate uh, you asking for previous information about each individual violator. However, uh, you have the understanding that you're dealing just with the issue that would be in front of you, uh, and we wouldn't want to have anything in the past that might prejudice the initial determination of uh, the facts of the case you know that that has to be completely independent of any research in the background that you do um, and so I just so want to you're point saying that the track out. record is not relevant at all it, it is in the penalty phase. in the penalty phase okay. it's very yes. relevant sir yeah. but prior to reaching the decision uh, we have to present the facts of this particular incident and you know there are a different set of facts for each of the potential violators uh, that you'll listen to and hear presented and once you make that determination then it is appropriate to take a look at people's track record and, and again I, I'm not a lawyer I'm not counsel giving you advice I'm just talking from my experience over the years both in criminal cases as well as hearings before the board so bill perhaps we can check with special counsel you know liquor counsel to okay. see is it appropriate for us to receive as part of the hearing packet that night the history so that we when we get through the hearing we will it will be in front of us but the other question I have is um, the liquor license regulations themselves I believe chief they reference a certain time frame of look back related to uh, correct history. in uh, in the penalty or, or, or the punishment area, there is a specific language on, I believe it's a three year look back. So uh, the history would have to be with right. relevant it would have within to be that three year period. Within time the period. three year period, if a violation was found uh, on any of the licensees that we have in the community. Is that, is that a, um, a town violation or a uh, state violation? Because it was one in the past we were dealing at the local level and there was something going on at the state uh, license level. That's a good question. I and, think we and, should. And we didn't make, we didn't, it yeah. was two trains passing. Yeah, we, you we, if didn't, we didn't know about that. Is a state protocol or our protocol? Well, it, it's can our, we can, yeah, it, it's, it's, it's our, our protocol. protocol, but the information was not available to us. Correct. And so can we just confirm that we can use that information even though it wasn't in front of our board? It seems like we should be able mm -hmm. to. If we get that information for the penalty phase, can we ask for like a timeout just to review that and use that part of the, the hearing? We could do that just to give us enough time to actually read the information if we can't get it beforehand. Well, let me let me just uh, review this with counsel and then um, and I'll advise you. I'll send you something um, directly as to how this will this should properly proceed. Okay. And uh, and then we'll, we'll be that'll be prior to the meeting, so I'll send it all to you, mm -hmm. and you'll have that, so we can go go for that, and then we'll provide you the information that he suggests in the, in the packet, and then move on to the various phases as, as appropriate. Yeah. And and can we have the person here, or is that? No, we would make arrangements oh, sure. uh, based on the schedule that you discussed tonight. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Sergeant Nolan will notify him uh, so that he would appear, and if at all possible, appear exactly how he was dressed yes. that particular night mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm sorry, just so I'm not are you talking about the person here meaning person who showed up at the establishment the, the are you talking about the bartender no no the no, no, no the, uh, oh, okay okay fair enough because right. he's, he's a primary witness uh, at least initially would be able to give evidence directly as mm -hmm. to what occurred in each facility correct yeah right. that's because yeah. some of the hearings we had yeah. the person behind the bar here and some we didn't so that's what I thought you were yeah. asking mm -hmm. okay yeah just so the boards are aware I am perfectly fine with the approach that you're using I think it's it's I think it's a good one actually I I'm not used to actually being involved in any of the 
uh, hearing phases of liquor licenses. I've always viewed that, that this board is the liquor licensing authority, and as such, should hear the case directly. So that's just been my experience, and your approach here tonight is consistent with that. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. um, are there any specific dates? Can we talk about those tonight, just so mm -hmm. people can check their schedules? Um, any specific bad dates for people? Yeah, next Tuesday's bad for me. Well, I don't, I don't think it can be advertised before right. next Tuesday anyways. Right. Then, it has to be like a public hearing. Then I'm okay. And then the mm -hmm. 4th of November is not good. But we can work around it. Mm -hmm. So just not on the 4th? No 4th, okay. Hmm. And not next week because it's too, right. uh, too soon. Okay. okay. Great. And, and um, since we're doing the all, if if there's an ability if there's an ability to have a regularly scheduled board of selectmen meeting next Tuesday where we can get some of the more pressing stuff done, I, I think this is just going to back up a lot of stuff. Yeah. So we're we're not doing any advertising for a regular meeting if there's stuff that we could have next Tuesday, mm -hmm. so we can move forward a little more efficiently. That's something that might work. Yep. Okay. I, I know that one. We'll be we'll be before you on the 28th, dealing with the um, with the town hall project because at that point we're going to be looking to get your blessing on who's the uh, they're going to present you with the architect, uh, mm -hmm. the person of, of choice. Yeah. At that point. Yeah. So uh, that's what I'm I'm trying to avoid putting other business on the back mm -hmm. burner while we have to deal with this. Right. Okay. So. Um why don't we schedule a meeting for next Tuesday? Try and move up the next items, the following meeting items, yep. and free that one up. To the extent that we can. I mean, there are certain yeah. things that we can. I don't know what's what's on the on the on the front log of a few things, but we'll take a look yeah. on Tuesdays. Yeah, we'll take a look. I'm not I next week. I'm not here next week. Okay. Public hearing. Yeah, okay. there's a public hearing on the twenty-first. Okay. Yeah, we'll do we'll do the best we can. Okay, we'll take a look. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, next item. Thanks, Chief. Thank Thanks, Chief. Chief. Okay. Thank you. Our discussion about the special town meeting, the draft warrant articles. We have in our packet um, chart. No, I'm sure if I if I could just ask uh, so make a few comments about the chart. Um, yeah. First of all, I want to thank Deb for doing this. Uh, she went forward after, with some very little instruction for me as to how to do this, and, uh, and she uh, she pulled it together pretty quickly. So, but I, I um, this is was in response to the board's discussion that follow, following week, uh, last week, last meeting rather, where we uh, there was concern about how this process has evolved, and um, this may not be the perfect solution, but it's it's a solution, and, and I. And we put this out there for board's reaction, and, and this is I get we get this. This is what came back. So, um, and we'll continue to to you know perfect this as we go forward. But what it does sort of give you is an indication as to when it was first received, when we uh, when we actually put it before you for initial presentation, and then um, uh, and then and then discussion dates, and then and then the action by the board to include or remove it, uh, and then uh, the advertised date. And then dates sent to Adcom, and the final recommendations of the board to Adcom. So, the uh, the dates sent to Adcom will be certainly preceding your action, um, but you know they're getting both dates are getting relatively close in terms of uh, your final actions. So, um, at this point in time, I believe there are eight items that are still under consideration by the board. Um, they are the new police officer. The, uh, the DBW administration office, uh, the town hall project uh, soft cost funding, the sign bylaw, the additional liquor licenses, the zoning bylaw, uh, deleting the accessory apartments, the zoning uh, bylaw, uh, Foxborough Center overlay district map, and the zoning bylaw uh, height of buildings. Uh, four items have been removed, being the, being the Oak Street lots. Uh, the constable uh, general town bylaw amendments, the auditorium restrictions, the, uh, the petition to the legislature, 
and the Dexter Road auction of the three quarter acres uh, of land. So, um, so that, those are the eight items that are before you tonight. Um, so, if I can discuss for discussion for the board is is how do you feel about the remaining eight items that are out there? And I'll get into a further discussion later on about process going forward from here as to how we should deal with with uh, um, articles so that there's so the board's comfortable in, in putting articles on and, and, and not doing it in a way that we've just done it so we can have a little more discussion about that mm -hmm. okay all right so um, <clears throat> why don't we just proceed down the list in this order and uh, you know decide then we if we still want to include it or remove it so starting with the new police officer position the budget adjustment consensus to still include that I'm just just do yeah, just yes. just for clarification, all we voting is: do we move it forward, yes. or is this our vote on it? No, this is Whether just: do we want to move it forward? Okay. Yep. Yep. So, uh, item number one: the new police officer budget adjustment consensus to move that forward. Yes. 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 Yeah. Okay. Yep. Uh, DPW administrative office building addition. Yes. 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 Yep. Town hall project funding soft costs. Yes. Yes. Yep. Signed bylaw. Yes. Yes. I just want to change that sponsor to BOS because it is a general bylaw. Okay. Okay. The next item: additional liquor licenses um, for discussion tonight. I just wanted to give an update. Um, we were present at a planning board meeting. Uh, we had a joint meeting with the planning board the week before and um, had a really good discussion with them. Um, I had explained what uh, some of the thoughts were behind this uh, coming forward related to uh, looking at the parcels of land that are coming up for potential auction as one item. Um, talked about, Ginny had brought forward uh, le legislation that Mansfield had passed through and, and their approach and uh, planning board was uh, supportive of that approach. Um, they did express concerns as Jim had you know the week before f about timing and to not want to rush this type of thing through um, so the other thing the other point that they raised which I think was really valid uh, to consider is that um, more important probably to the sale of those of that parcel is the presence of sewer mm -hmm. and the need to have that pipe in there would certainly you know affect someone's willingness to buy that property so um, and that piece is moving forward I'm working with the water and sewer commission okay on that. Yes. so that that will be actually even more critical than mm -hmm. that so you know to me based on you know the input received from the planning board um, I was going to suggest that uh, we put this on hold until the spring and I, I just wanted to hear what the other board members thought after the planning board meeting yeah, actually, uh, I think that meeting we, we found that there's, um, at the Jim's point, there's a lot of dimensions to this question mm -hmm. that need full explora exploration. And some, some of the help may come from our, you know, Jay Barrows and, and others, uh, folks in the legislators to walk us through the process. Right. But it's also, um, it's such an important issue that I think if we rushed it through, uh, we, we may be walking down a road that we may regret. So I think it's, uh, it's wise to put it off until the spring. Yeah, and I had um, the next day I had gone to the planning board and got some uh, additional information in regard to the nodes and all that stuff. So, uh, no, I agree. I think this probably should be something that should be put off um, to the annual meeting. But I, I think I, I'm going to agree with what you're going to talk about further down the road, and I'd like to reserve some comments for, for your, um, your your comments later, later sure. on. But I, I think we should pull this. Jim, I know. No, th thank you. I appreciate that. Um, and, and, and if we're looking towards the spring, kind of the bigger picture, it's this is one issue that I think the planning board obviously has a lot of um, information that, that would be helpful. But the residents, certainly in light of, of the liquor violations, it, it's a little bit of an uproar, and, and mm -hmm. rightfully so, mm -hmm. um, in, in how many we need. So if we're going to look at it in the spring, we've got really a lot of work to do. So, I, mm -hmm. you know, I don't want to put it off. and. Yeah. and pick it up again in um, in March uh, yeah. you know maybe there's some some ability to put a group together to look at it and look at the um, 
you know, all different aspects of it, mm -hmm. and then come back to report what, to us uh, so we have a little bit more information. Actually, the crafting of the legislation is not because Mansfield has paved the way. I mean, the legislation is vetted by House right. Council and everything. Mm -hmm. So it's it, it's more or less just fill in uh, the blanks. It's, it's a boilerplate. It's, yeah. it's yeah. You can right. Download so it. I mean, it's, 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 it's yeah, 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 yeah. But it's yeah, but the, Jane, it's the, the uh, discussion on how many. And yeah, the bigger where they question is what like does that. it do to the town? Exactly. Well, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. that's right. So yeah. that's right. It's more yeah. of a philosophical discussion and, and policy discussion as to how you want to proceed from here. Right. But I, we, I actually had a meeting with um, with Representative Barrows and State Senator Timothy this morning, and uh, we talked about the legislation and how it's being perceived now at the legislative level. And uh, they do like the, the the fact that it's uh, that they're earmarked for certain areas. They, that seems to be something that they favor these days, as well as the uh, there was another aspect too. I think that they talked about where they. Um, but it, it is a pretty much a standardized approach in these days uh, as to how they're doing it. And they they see the advantage of of making sure that communities are very comfortable with this legislation before it goes forward. They do see it, they do view it as being an economic uh, uh, point, uh, um, um, impetus type of thing. But uh, but they also want to make sure that it doesn't do anything to, that further uh, that inhibits the or hurts the quality of life uh, balance that's, imp that's important to every community. Mm -hmm. So, um, so I, I think it is a pretty standard approach. I think it's a question of you know, what's the right number that you all feel comfortable with. And I think I think you're wise to have a, a good discussion about this policy, have a good process, make sure that everybody's comfortable with the direction it's being taken. You, you, you rarely ever get 100% agreement, but it's important to at least have a, have a good good majority of folks supporting it. Okay. All right. So, um, can we? <coughs> Make a motion to actually remove this. Make it a formal motion to remove this item. Well, we haven't. We removed the other ones. We haven't made any formal motions. I thought we did. No. No. I'm thinking of the Camp Lincoln Hill. There was no formal motion, and the other ones were just kind of taken off. Maybe we go through the list and make one motion for all of the ones just to clean it up. To accept those that remain. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so the next item, zoning bylaw, deleting accessory apartments. Mm -hmm. Move that forward, yes? Yes. Okay. Um, zoning for the Foxborough Center overlay district map, yes. yes. And the height of buildings, That's yes. Fine. Okay. So we'll make this the final list. So seven. Agreement on that, seven. Okay, I'll make a motion that the Board of Selectmen move forward onto the warrant. Um, articles one, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, as presently numbered, um, to go to special town meeting. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank right. you. Thank you very much. So, Bill, you wanted to talk about um, continuing with this type of process. Yes, yeah, so I, I really do think. Um, Based on the conversations that I heard the board make, that we we really ought to sort of de help define a process. And I'm not sure if you formalize it or informal, but um, obviously when, it, when you formalize it, it always makes it easier to at least use as a guideline. But having a discussion about how you want to proceed in, in putting items together for warrant articles in the future, because I think it's unfortunate, but the way you, you would think that with the fact that we only have two meetings a year, that there's plenty of time to get these things done and and so often more often than not we find ourselves rushed into getting all the information we need to, in order to get stuff before a town meeting so the question is what's the right timing for that um and how far can we look into our crystal ball to see what what's going to be the issue we need for a town meeting because as we know not every article we know is is something that's that's come up within the past two three four months some of them do, and there's a lot of them that do, but not every one of them does. So the question is, what's the right process for that? And I, I, I think you all should really think about that because, you know, it's important that you're, that you're all comfortable as a board as to how you're putting forward articles on a warrant and, uh, and that you, you feel that it's been properly vetted, properly heard, and that you're comfortable making a recommendation to be placed on a warrant. So I just want to get some reaction from the board as to what kind of a process you'd like to see. Going forward. 
Uh, well, in, in the past, um, it seems that mm -hmm. the um, Warren articles that were sponsored by the selectmen were all of a sudden presented to them like on a sheet of paper and this is it, without really the Board of Selectmen developing the Warren article. Because you got to remember all the other mm -hmm. boards and commissions, they have six, seven, eight months all year to de actually develop the Warren articles. And that's what I'd like to see. I'd like to see us uh, working on, on the development because, you know, I might have an idea for a Warren article. It's mentioned, oh, that's a good idea, blah, blah, blah. And nothing ever happens. It doesn't, so what, what I'd like to do is be able to actually work on that idea, work on the Warren article, and then have it presented so that when it, it truly is a Board of Selectmen Warren article. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I have a lot of sympathy for the advisory committee as they try to digest mm -hmm. this and research it and actually give the town the advice that the town looks for. And every, every town meeting, it seems, we're right up to the 11th hour and ADCOM is trying to um, deliberate and, and push through the advice that, that they give us. I was wondering, and maybe, I don't know if other towns do this, but is, is there a cutoff date? by which um, warrant articles need to be submitted. In other words, could we have a solid seven to eight weeks and, and after that nothing more can, can be presented? Well, th there is a, it's, it's clearly laid out with, the, with respect to a special time meeting. I don't know what you, I'm not so sure about the annual. The annual, you can, theoretically, you can, you can, people can submit articles all year long. But our process, hmm. Is, is such that, you know, we, we and, it, and it should be vetted more deeply at the Board of Select. Right. I think that's, mm -hmm. that, shame on us for not having that as part of our um, meeting uh, discussions. But but the process, the way this town operates is the, you know, the, the ADCOM, which is a cross-section of uh, citizens, actually gets a chance to research it. And, you know, we, we really re rely heavily on ADCOM to give us something better than a rubber stamp. And, but they need time. And I'm wondering, you know, some, and it's been historic that, that we've been pressing them at the 11th hour with sometimes overwhelming articles. And I'm just wondering if we can uh, have a cutoff date by which it's all packaged up, ready to go, we've done our piece, and then we hand it over to ADCOM, and, you know, they do their thing, they, they publish their opinion in the paper, and then we, we show up at town meeting. I, think, we, I, I, th <clears throat> I think we need, a, we need a cutoff date so that the other mechanisms of the town can function. I think the, the, the challenge you face is that um, some things will always come up, you know, at the last minute that you, that you, want, that you think you really want to consider, like whether it be a grant or some th something that comes up that you really want to include that has required some action from town meeting. Um, the time-sensitive ones, of course, but, but I think generally speaking, you could say that by, you know, by setting a goal that these are the things that we'd like to see develop over the course of the next year. And we like to bring to town meeting for consideration. I think your your planning board has, is going to do its business because that's they, they do their course of business no matter what uh, what this board does. The finance committee or, or the adcom in in, in Foxborough's case um, only reacts to what's presented before them. So, and we, we we start the budget process I think relatively early. We start it too early to get to the point where how reliable is really the information. Because you have we rely on revenues and forecasting and things of that nature, so we can only start it so early. But I think that's the only thing that Randy doesn't have is the exactly the, the, the cherry sheet funds coming back from the state. Right. Right. So then the question is, okay, um, is there any other items that anybody can foresee as you sit here today, or you know even you know a month from now that you say you know let's put this on a list for consideration because we think this should be something we should think about for the next town meeting. And I think that it should be almost like part of like your, 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 your agenda for each meeting to say, okay, I'm thinking about this article. Any one of you could say this. I'm thinking about submitting an article for consideration at town meeting, and I'd like to have a conversation about this instead of putting it on an agenda. I mean, I think that's that way. It's, it's about as crystal clear as you can get. I mean, you know, in terms but of. But to Ginny's process. point, and I think it's very accurate, is that yeah. the the board of selectmen, you know, when I was on the other side of the table at the yeah. adcom. You'd ask the board of selectmen, so who 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 sponsored this? And they go, I don't know. It just magically right, appeared. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's it's, it's, it's process. It's process. Developing the it's process, process versus yeah. the board of selectmen. It's process. 
from, from a timing <coughs> perspective, I can share how Westwood did it. Uh, generally, in uh, January, in preparation for the Maytown meeting, they open and close the warrant. So one of the, the early January meeting, they open it and then they close it. And they reserve two or three articles called Selectman's Articles so that if something comes up, for example, at the special town meeting coming up in Westwood, we had just negotiated the fire department out of civil service. We wouldn't have known that back in January. It just came about. So they had some reserved blank articles. So if mm -hmm. you're closing the warrant, um, you know, those would be the sort of the last minute ones you'd do crunch time with your ad com. Does Westwood have the equivalent of an ad com? Uh, they, yeah, they have a finance and warrant committee. Okay. Do they meet every, do they meet more frequently than just before a uh, town meeting? Um, are the meetings there's ongoing? A, there's a few more public hearings and, and things like that, but the selectmen meet on a very similar schedule to you. But I mean, like the in, in Westwood, does the finance committee? Oh, yes. They have subcommittees yeah. where they come out and meet with all the municipal departments, and then they meet uh, on a regular Clock basis. On a regular yeah, basis. yeah. So it's more than just right, that's more than just to discuss the Warren articles right before a, a town meeting. Well, uh, typically, you don't get much activity from, a, from a, a, an adcom during the months of July and August. Hmm. It's usually September through May, mm -hmm. um, and even June, to, to a lesser degree in June, but once the town meeting's held, it's a little bit of a lull, you know, two or three month lull as to what's going on. We just, it's like usually a clean up article in July when, the, when we get all the, the state aid and, and uh, all the final, the final budgets, uh, the budget just are concluded. Mm -hmm. So it's um, your process here is not that dissimilar, and and by the way, the same issues that that happen here happen everywhere else. So don't think that you're unique in that. In that oh, we're just trying to improve. Yeah, it. that's right. But yeah. but I think process wise, it's a good discussion to have. I mean, because I I could see the the the, the concern of issues being raised. They say, you know, did we properly vet this issue, and did we have enough adequate time to consider all the issues that are associated with it before we put it forward? And, and, you know, and and I think it's a good it's a fair point. You know, you should you really feel comfortable. Your board, you as a board should feel comfortable that every article that goes on that warrant is something you feel comfortable putting forward, even if you disagree with it. But but you but you think that it's been properly aired. Mm -hmm. I think that's all we're looking for. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, at the very least, this spreadsheet is good. At the one column that's miss or one row that's missing is um, advertisement in the local paper because that kind of starts off a lot of the stuff. But when we're starting to receive information from the different boards I mean they could be working countless hours on it but when it comes to us it should be some consistency with you know it says warrant article proposed at the top mm -hmm. with stuff so when we see it on a list looking forward what to expect there should be an author um, a summary of why they're doing it in, in, in the article itself um, and then some discussion on which town meeting it may be appropriate for because we have a special town meeting in a regular town meeting. So the regular town meeting is usually very budget oriented. Um, and a lot of times in the special town meeting, and I've seen towns do summer town meetings just because it was an article they wanted to jam forward. Mm -hmm. um, and people aren't around to vote on it. So, right. you know, discussion from the board of, of where it's more appropriate. If it's not pressing, maybe it's appropriate for the following special town meeting where it leaves room for the regular town meeting, those type of discussions. So your point is to have this be a running list with things oh, added. Absolutely, yeah. And then yeah. It's, so it's not prepared just for one meeting. It's yeah. prepared right. year-round. Yep. Because, yeah, you know, what, what we tend to lose is in, if you go to the town meetings when the planning board has seven, eight articles, and they're all very good articles, and time runs out because of whatever reason, they need to come back. But what we saw last time is they brought it for us. It, it was at our tables but nobody really paid attention. So now we're, we've got a bunch of articles, but if we had seen you know, the building height and the accessory apartments, that these were presented a year ago and they ran out of time, and that's why they've moved up the list. Uh, s similar to what we did when we were on the CIP, when people ask for funding. So it's like a running list. It's a running, it's a running list. list. So if, if an article's been there for two years, it gets a little more attention than somebody else. And you start asking questions, okay, why isn't it gone forward? Yeah. You know. Yeah, so. and, and you know, then you look at the some want to blame the planning board for mm -hmm. coming late, and they're saying it's been here, and then it gets dumped on the adcom to try to do something that maybe they had the information a year before, you know, pull it out. It, 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 but it's so this, reason. and that, long story short, this is a good start for it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and also, I, I don't want to lose, you know, town meeting is 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 very important to a lot of people, but there's uh, an ability for 
people to put things on town meeting that is not associated with the selectmen or the planning board. Mm -hmm. And if we can remind the people that if you have good ideas, you can sponsor an article, you get the uh, numbered signatures, right. put a uh, proposal together and bring it in, f in front of the town. And I think that's how you get a lot more people involved that they can make a difference. And, and we just don't do that in the outreach at all. So, yeah, I, I'm just concerned that that good ideas are being lost, not carried forward because someone else thinks everyone thinks someone else is doing the work. Mm -hmm. And um, so I'd like to see, especially things that the board selectmen are concerned about. I'd like to see us get involved in a process. And okay, if we have we have an idea about something, work with another committee that can help us uh, present the Warren article. I mean, become liaisons to other to other boards in order to learn from the other boards and also to find out what the other boards are doing, because right. that may have a direct um, effect on the Warren article that's being presented. Planning board is a perfect example. Mm -hmm. Well, it's you know, always better when, when when multiple boards can support each other uh, on, 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 an, on an article of town meeting because it, it gives the, 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 the voting public confidence that our, that our public leaders are all in sync on the same issues. Right. So I think that's a that's a very very valid point. Yeah. Yeah. I th I think if if we are attending other board meetings, probably would be helpful maybe during our selectmen's update even to consider just giving a brief synopsis mm -hmm. of what you heard and if the board members think it, it warrants you know being an agenda item in the future we should do that mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. you know things do come up and um, I think we just if you're thinking about something I think that's the time to raise it you know and you know if you want to discuss it with me and then and if I if I can offer some some level of assistance or, or even Mary Beth that's matter you know mm -hmm. we certainly we're both here to, to provide that level of assistance at this point so and I also think we should include Mr. Moderator. Yes, absolutely. In the discussion. Absolutely. So, Bill, we need a keeper of the list. Thanks. Keeper of the list. <laughs> no. <Here> go, Deb. <laughs> <laughs> so, can we add to the list right now? <laughs> sure. Yeah. Um, the additional liquor licenses being an issue that will take much study, um, I wanted to suggest actually for the board to consider. I know Ginny has looked at the other legislation already. Um, do you mind if we volunteered you? No. To, to look at that project. I have no life. No. <laughs> Is that all right? That's fine. Right. And, and I think, you know, you, what you should think about is, okay, who is the right, yes. who's the right audience for this? Who, who are the right players for the, for the discussion? And then, and then start, you know, looking at some, some, some outreach meetings to, to try and gather as much information mm -hmm. as possible. Yeah, and, and also when it seems like when mm. the other boards have a warrant article, they actually have a hearing on the warrant article. And we really don't have. I mean, we have a hearing, but not really. I'd like to have a hearing to get uh, people's input. You know, maybe, you know, on on something, mm -hmm. present the idea for warrant article, and what's what's the input. You know, could that be like an mm. agenda? I, I I don't think they all have hearings. I think if it's a zone change or something like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But just the fact that they're bringing a warrant article, there's not a hearing on it. Yeah. I but I mean, believe. it would be nice to get. Yeah, well, we could have an open forum have, night. We could have an agenda. Yeah, an yeah. agenda. Yeah. Yeah. Anyone's could input. Yeah. They can they can turn up. Yeah. 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 And that ends we're thinking about yeah. and what do you, yeah. how do people feel about these. Yeah. And that goes back to you know when we, we say the article name, let's not be cryptic about it. If what the article is, put a sentence or two if you have to. Sure. So people understand what we're talking about because a lot of people are surprised that what we're talking about was not understood in the uh, agenda mm -hmm. so. okay. sometimes we were surprised <laughs> <laughs> um, the other item I wanted to mention that was out there for a couple of years uh, again is the personnel wage bylaw mm -hmm. something that had been discussed for a long time now. yeah two we, we, we've had a lot of conversation about that right mm -hmm. so even in the show two days, so well, well, two days. <laughs> welcome again yeah, that's right. yeah. In what respect, revamping it or? Yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. So um, that was great discussion. Thank you. Did Did the Edcom representative want to say anything? <laughs> Just uh, I always have to say something, right? So. <laughs> Frank, you're next. This is this is kind of pertinent to, to your discussion. It, it, it's my my annual or semi annual complaint. We still don't have a warrant in our hands. 
and if we have a town meeting in five weeks, so. Why don't, why doesn't he have a, why don't you have you a have warrant You have a draft warrant, you have a draft warrant? Well, it, yeah. it's about as crude a draft, it's not in the form of a warrant, it's, you know, it's very, very crude. It's pieces of paper that people have been giving us, so it'd be really nice oh. to at least have okay. something that had the we'll, town seal on it that said draft and we'll get had that the numbers. Yeah, we, we have we'll that, that right now. Okay, right now. if you could, we'll if you could you send me that and I'll bring it to our meeting tomorrow night. That would be, that'd be great. So right. something like this you don't have? Yes. Yeah, you don't, I don't have that. I don't have that. No. Okay, you'll okay. get that. Because I thought it was. I thought I saw it at the last meeting. Tracy might have it, but okay. I, she hasn't. She hasn't passed it out. We'll, but she's on uh, our honeymoon. Fair so can we send That's copies? Yeah, we'll, we'll send it off. Right. We'll yeah. make the copies for you. Yeah. Could you also refer to it as like draft number one? Because well, another, down the road there might yeah. be draft that's number it. two. Well, yeah. but I think what's yeah. important right now is that it's clear, at least from the board's perspective, that these are the seven articles that you're going to be considering at this point. So well, you know, the you wording know, too, because you know. we want to start voting on this, but we yeah. can't vote on it until we have language that we're fairly certain is what's going to be presented yeah. at town meeting. It's you know, it's it's silly to start voting on things that could change. Okay. So. All right. Thanks. Good. No problem. I'm glad you okay. asked. Now. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Very good. Frank, did you want to comment? Um. <laughs> I think I'm just listening to your conversation. First thing that uh, I really come away with is uh, communication between all the boards and committees. I think it's uh, first and foremost uh, important. Um, again, with regard what Larry was talking about, they technically cannot vote a warrant article until you vote the warrant. Mm -hmm. There's no warrant until you have voted it. Um, so I understand the frustration with them but you also have to go through that process. Frank, not, not, I don't, don't mean to interrupt, but just so I'm clear, we voted this warrant article two meetings ago, correct? Right. To open, this to warrant, close yeah. it. Oh, the warrant. The warrant, right. The okay. Warrant, yeah. So yeah. if we voted on a Tuesday, why doesn't the ADCOM get it on a Wednesday? Yeah, and, and it's going to change, but we've already, weeks yeah. ago we've gone through that. You know, and they've already started their process. I mean, they, they've already held hearings on, on, on half a dozen articles, right? Yeah, but they don't have so, a final form. Right. Right. And, and well, your final form really took place tonight because you, you finalized your, your seven articles that you're putting forward. Well, final form is we just removed to. But right. The, right. the language is identical to what it was weeks ago. Correct. So my point is is that they, they have that information, so and they've been holding hearings. The question is which are the ones that are actually going to be acted on at this point. So now, you, now they have that. So worst case... You've been holding discussion on articles that we just pulled away, and it's lost work. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll give you one specific example. That's the sign bylaw. Yeah. Now, last week we were still, not we. I was an observer at the advisory group's meeting, and we we're, you know, you were still looking at the red line mm -hmm. copy, and so we don't have. That's an important article, and we don't have the final version yet of that. Okay. But so, Larry, to be yeah. fair, I was at the meeting where the final was presented, and there was a lot of discussion. And during those discussions, things were changed and pulled away because of the adcom discussion. Mm -hmm. So this is a well, process. But that wasn't so. There's been a number of changes to yeah. that that were outside of anything the adcom had to say. Oh, Attorneys okay. showed up at the meetings, made some great points. The group decided to change some of the wording. Um, so this process is going exactly. week it's after going week. going on up until last week at least. Right. So I don't know that there's right. final wording yet, but gotcha. you know, we'll, uh, it's, it's it's pretty. That's a very complicated article. Yeah. We need to get, we'll get the get final that wording. Tomorrow night. In. Thank you. Thanks. Very good. We can, have, we can take this one now. This one's mm -hmm. ready. But again, I think it comes back to communication mm -hmm. uh, between uh, board of selectmen, the advisory committee, planning board, mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. through the town manager's office. Um, I know when Andy Gala was here, he, he was really the point person who kept everybody appraised of what was going on. One of the issues that's come up with the advisory committee in recent years is working on warrant articles then, that are then dropped. Mm -hmm. So they view you know, a number of hours on a warrant article that the selectmen then decide to drop. And they feel, you know, why should we be working on something that's going to be uh, dropped? Also, that was the purpose of this discussion tonight. Right. So yeah. we don't do that. Right. right. Yeah. right. So, mm -hmm. I, so I, I, I concur with that. 
approach to it, you know, um, and, and things coming up at the last meeting, yeah. one of the at last minute, and uh, I know John concur on this, is that union contracts many times are <laughs> My pet peeve. Uh, negotiated, you know, uh, the last day of April for the May town meeting, and the advisory committee has very little or no time. Um, I know John had a situation when he was the chairman where the advisory committee said we're not going to consider it, uh, which at the time I thought was the correct thing because there was no time. Um, sometimes it's done on purpose, uh, to be quite frank. Um, and I think, I know Bill has his own little informal uh, timetable with regard to those types of things, mm -hmm. uh, which I think is good. But I think it all goes back to communication. If, if the boards can communicate what's going on and um, go forward with that, you know, things can really be uh, worked out because it's never going to be smooth sailing, but you want it as smooth as you can. I think that's what everyone's trying to do. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Brian. We all set with uh, the draft warrant article discussion. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. On to the town hall working group. Get an update from Bill. Sure. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. The, we uh, town hall working group met again this evening, and we uh, we met at 4:30. Finished up around six o'clock. Um, the conversation um, with the group was was actually quite good tonight because we we were focused on trying to get. Um, everybody to understand that the next piece of our process is to really just to, is, is communication, getting words, getting the word out to everyone as to what we're trying to achieve. Um, the that that discussion actually spilled over into, um, you know, what's should we actually hold a public hearing on this or a public information meeting so we can actually uh, present all the information that we have about the project up to this point. And, uh, and sort of help, maybe help some of the debate at town meeting because if we've answered a lot of those questions, I think we'll be in a much better position to, uh, to basically, you know, to, to help, the, help the decision at town meeting. And so we, we concluded that we, went, we were going to try and set a time for, um, for a public meeting on October 30th. Um, so at that point, October 30th, we chose that date because the Board of Selectmen will be meeting on the 28th of October to... Uh, give their approval to the architect that we're of choice at that point. Obviously, we wouldn't, wouldn't know, we wouldn't know what a contract to that person until after town meeting determines if we're going to get the funding or not. But we at least would have that information to put, report out. Um, we wouldn't necessarily, we'd necessarily have a contract with that person yet either, or a proposed contract with that person as to what the numbers would be. So we're trying to shoot for October 3rd. We know that's the day before Halloween, but... You know, by the same token, it's it's also getting closer to town meeting, where this information is really important for people to have. So um, that would was this be uh, a, I was thinking. A, a two-way discussion, or would just be um, you well, give, giving information. We will we will provide a presentation yeah. about how all the information that we've gathered, how we how we how we uh, collected it, uh, the recommendations that we're making, and why, and um, and then and then folks can can ask questions. I mean, and then and they can ask us, you know, why do you feel this is so important, or I disagree with you on this, and that's fine. You know, it's important to know why people disagree. But by the same token, it's important for us to know what we've missed, and it, and it also affords us an opportunity to either to gather more information if necessary before the town meeting. Sounds like a so. town meeting. <laughs> but it's important to have that, that that input first. I mean, I really do think that an issue of this significance should be, and I think the committee uh, pretty much overwhelmingly supported this, that they felt it was a good opportunity for us to get the word out and to ask people for their input at this early stage before the town meeting happens. So we can try and address any questions I may have. So Bill, the, the presentation that you did to the joint meeting with the advisory committee, mm -hmm. the permanent building committee, town hall meeting uh, group and selectmen, um, very informational, uh, very enlightening. Mm -hmm. If that was on cable, yep. you know the ad adcom doesn't broadcast their meetings, but that type of a dialogue between presentation, question and answer, resolving issues, going back to yep. the table, 
would have been very helpful. So yep. if cable could broadcast it, I, I, October 30th on a Thursday night, you're probably going to get 20 people maybe. It's just the nature of it. But it'll be the same type of yeah. discussion. But if that same type of dialogue yeah, we'll be, showed we'll, up on we'll broadcast that. Yeah, we'll Channel 8, yeah. I, yeah. I think you'll, you'll I think get a lot. think the presentation will be helpful. Yeah. 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 But I'm just I'm, I'm concerned that you know it, it doesn't get completely aired out at that public information meeting. Um, and, and, and lesser so at town meeting? Well, I think at town meeting, um, folks are going to say what they, what they think is important anyways. I mean, I, I think that's the community's forum to say what they want to say and how they really feel about an issue. And they'll, they'll say it either way. Because I mean, I'm but, assuming you're planning to do a presentation at town meeting sure. on the topic. Okay. Yeah, same thing. Well, it might shorten town meeting a bit to air it out a bit ahead of time. Yeah. Okay. I found that my experience has shown me that that really does help people to feel comfortable about an issue before it's presented. So that it's sort of, it, you know, if we can, and plus if we can anticipate questions a little bit and understand what, what's what's concerning to people. Because uh, a lot of times, a lot of misinformation gets circulated, as we all know. Uh, half information, not full, fully vetted information. And as a result, people form opinions pretty quickly about something that, is not necessarily based on factual information. So we're gonna, we're gonna try and get as much factual information as we can and then let folks form their own opinions after that. That's a good idea, I think. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. So that's that's it. Um, the we, we had a conversation tonight and I and I can say this publicly tonight and I can say, and I hope Dick Kaidek, you're listening to this, so we clearly talked about the renovation issue tonight. There was no question about that issue. <laughs> All right, so anybody who says we didn't talk about it just isn't telling the truth. But we clearly talked about it tonight, and we, and we added out that issue, and we, and we presented our reasons why we think it's important to do the renovation. Um, and it's, it, it's, it really is, is based on the fact that there are a lot of question marks with doing a renovation versus doing a new building. And when you, and you walk through, the, uh, and when you do a project like this, at the end of the day, there was nobody, even including, in fact, I asked this question repeatedly tonight, is can everybody in this room tell me with certainty what they know what the final cost will be with a renovation? And his answer was no. And, and that's what that's what I'm comfortable about. And that's, you know, where it's a new project, we know what the number's gonna be, it's gonna be clear, uh, and we'll go from there. Uh, and I just think that if we're gonna spend a significant amount of money of you know, taxpayers' dollars for a project of this nature, nature and significance, we should get the best product we can get for it. And it's, it's, I think that is, that is critically important in this discussion. And I've not been persuaded by any information that's been presented so far that having, that doing a renovation of the building is gonna do anything, it's, it's, gonna be, it's gonna provide us with a better product in the end. I just haven't been persuaded by that. So I think the, the, major, the vast majority of my committee members feel the same way. The working group has been very supportive of that position for lots of reasons. And people that were that were clearly on the renovation side of that equation, from the beginning of this discussion, have, have likely have also been persuaded by that discussion as well. And that's not just didn't come from me. That came from collective discussion of a lot of people. So I think that's important that people know that. At at the meeting with the advisory committee, mm -hmm. um, uh, the actually the chairman of the advisory committee polled your mm -hmm. uh, your yeah. group in. Uh, Individually, they said except for one person was for renovation, but the rest of them were for a new building. So that that was interesting. That was a clear answer that right. the majority were. Um, and, and that's new. been consistently um, in the past several weeks. That has been consistently held uh, as the as the uh, position that the that the group has has discussed. Hmm. So I and I I'm going to continue to if if individuals in the community have questions that they want to talk to me about or members of the committee about members of the group as to how we've reached conclusions about things we are more than happy to talk to you directly um, you know talk to a group of people if, if, if folks want us to come out to talk to them directly we'll do that too um, it's important that people understand how we've reached these conclusions it's not it wasn't done you know, haphazardly it was done very very process oriented and I think you know if there was any question about this about how we have reached this conclusion uh, I just think that um, you know, that, that somebody's not been entirely truthful if that's the case. Okay. I just want to thank you and David again for... No problem. No, it's, been, it's been a great process ahead. for me as well. Thank you. Okay. Next item is the town manager update. 
Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Um, the, uh, this past week was uh, a, a pretty busy week. We, um, I met with the Metro West managers last Thursday uh, in Natick, and I actually took along uh, two of our uh, members of the police department with us to discuss, um, discuss uh, an issue about social media and how it's actually assisted the police department in uh, the town of Wellesley. Uh, and other communities who are, are going, using so, more social media as a maze of re ways of reaching out to the public and finding out more about, you know, something, if there's emergency or something like that, how they can report that information. Uh, they're using Twitter and they're using Facebook and they're using different types of, of uh, social media avenues to communicate this information. So I think it's really, it was really, really helpful, but it, it also is a time, big time investment. So I think, you know, we have to think about that. And I'm not sure we're, we're tooled well enough right now to, to deal with that, but I think we need to refocus our efforts a little bit to see how we can do that because I think that's the world has changed and that's how people communicate nowadays. Yeah. Bill, so we, we, we kind of got thrown into that a little bit when we lost yeah. electricity for sure. a week plus. Um, and we raised that, and one of our offices raised that as, yeah. as, as part of the issue. So, yeah. so it was, it was yeah. anyone that had a, a handheld, I mean, we provided yeah. the charging stations, right. you know, um, but the patch. Um, you know all, all the different news medias and, and even Facebook accounts and uh, what have you. Um, the other me the, the other stuff just went out the window. Right. You know, and, um, right. So it's is the you know and even so, you go back to the town hall discussion. I mean, do, is there a Facebook set up? Because that was a, a lot of well, I mean, here a lot is, is how do you a, get the information. There's a Facebook group, but it's yeah. not really a Facebook group. There. Yeah. Yeah. I, and I I think we have to be careful that we don't. Um, that I, I don't come out as appearing as, as, as just being impartial. I mean, where where our our our, our process is, I'm, I'm reporting the, the results of our process. All right, yeah. so I want to be careful that I don't go beyond that, and I'm just taking. Any hey, I'm, I'm not suggesting to do. I thought yeah. you had said you were going to set one up. We, we, at the we talked about that, yeah. but but and I think there was already one that was already established, and we didn't want to get compete okay. with that and get into that that kind of a, a battle, if we if you will, and that kind of a approach. Mm -hmm. But. Um, but you're right, you're right. It's something that we need to think about, seriously. In fact, some communities are going to, you know, they're retooling their organizations, not necessarily adding new positions, but, but retooling positions to become communication directors, hmm. which, which actually handle dealing with Twitter and Facebook and, 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 uh, and, and web pages to make sure they're up to date, providing all the information that, that people need for understanding what government's doing for them. So I think that's something we've got to look at organizationally. So, and then um, I, I also want to raise an issue, which uh, which is, you know, I'm, I, this is a very delicate issue. So I want I want to be very careful that I, I don't go too too far into this. Uh, but um, Selectman Develis had, had talked to me during the week about uh, somehow creating a uh, a final report, if you will, on on the whole Sheehan matter. Uh, it's been it's been out there for quite a long time, and. Uh, if we can sort of bring this to closure at this point, because there's not a lot we can do. We've reached a point of not much we can do at this point. So I think it's important that we, um, that I'd like to have a conversation with the, the chief and the board uh, in, in executive session, because I think there's obviously there's some legal issues here that we have to have to deal with. But, um, but I think we want to have that conversation about how we want to address that going forward. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we can help, somehow bring some closure to this. Yeah, let's, let's get on that one. Yeah. Yeah. And I think the uh, it wasn't anything specifically, but I, I find our our generation or our time today judging mm -hmm. what happened in the '70s and the '80s. And in, mm -hmm. in ten years from now, someone's going to look back and say, "Well, you know, you guys were there in 2014. How did you handle it?" Right. And there's there's no closure right now. Yeah. So I, I want to collectively figure out mm -hmm. how we look and see how we're addressing this and and. Right put something together that says this is what we're doing and this is what we've done and right. you know and, and on a, a side note um, you know we've been meeting every other week with that child sexual abuse uh, prevention mm -hmm. awareness committee um, and you know school and church and businesses and the leaders and you know, a couple of weeks ago they trained another big group of uh, coaches and, and, and uh, child leaders uh, darkness to light and, and it, it's I think we're we're dealing with that part as well, but that whole dark of what happened and, and where's the reports and where's the closure uh, is is missing right now. So that's I just wanted to get your your um, either approval or opinion before we 
No, I think it's, it's, it's an important topic, and I know it's been hanging out there for a while. And uh, right. uh, hopefully, collectively, we can find the, the resources to mm -hmm. to close it. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. And then um, on the website, you'll notice um, a, a new improvement to the website, and this is uh, through the work that uh, the town clerk has done. Bob Cutler and his and his team did was was they were able to finalize the work with. Uh, with uh, general code, and so now you can you can access our bylaws and uh, the charter on, on online. You can actually search out certain topics in the bylaws um, and all relevant laws associated with the town of Foxborough. So it's on the website now. People can access it. Uh, it's uh, was was put on the on the website last week, so it's out there. And I just want to let, let the public know that that's now fully operational. Uh, last Tuesday. Um, uh, I, t I had the the, uh, the pleasure of attending the uh, the nice uh, dedication or the uh, ribbon cutting of the new Igo playground. Uh, that was, uh, uh, as we all know, uh, the, uh, Mr. Kraft and and, uh, and and the Play 60 and the NFL Play 60 organization uh, donated a substantial amount of money. Uh, it was a thirty thousand uh, dollar grant from Mr. Kraft to, uh, from the uh, from the Play 60 group. But also, Mr. Kraft actually donated an additional thirty thousand uh, from his own funds, as well as funding for a new uh, sound system for the uh, for the band uh, or, the, or the choir, I guess it was. Uh, so they, um, so it was actually very generous from him doing that. And so they uh, they invited him back to the the final ribbon cutting. He was there. Uh, it, was, it was a little tough day after the after the loss on Monday night. Uh, he was a little tired, I think, from that that trip. But he was. Uh, but he did do that. It was actually it was great. It was a great ceremony. He did a nice job, um, and it was uh, the, the school department did a nice job with that as well. So I just want to report that out too. Um, there's several television shows that um, I've been working on uh, over the past uh, few weeks. Last week I, I taped a show with with Vicky Lowe on the uh, the senior uh, this, this your center your 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 senior center I guess is is a your your center your senior your center. Uh, is the show that she that she does, and uh, so I talked a little bit about the town hall project with that. She asked me several questions about that because that's an issue that's taught with the seniors as well. And then I'm doing uh, my own show this weekend, uh, this Friday. I'm doing a show where where Bill Euchner and uh, Ken Elvis will be my my guests, uh, and I'm also going to invite Mary Beth. She doesn't know that yet, but she, <laughs> I'm just going to, to to introduce it to the public in that discussion. And then uh, and then also. Um, and then finally, uh, I'm going to be on uh, the Bob um, Bob Hickey show. Thank you. <laughs> uh, sorry, Bob. Didn't mean to do that to you. Uh, the Bob Hickey show uh, on the 20th. Uh, we'll be we'll be out there for uh, talking about uh, the town hall project, but certainly other issues as well. We've got a bunch of issues that he's, he wants to talk about. And then um, finally, um, and also the adcom meeting I mentioned that earlier that we that we went uh, last week and that was a, I think a really good meeting, uh, great debate, great discussion, um, and I, I, I think we, we uh, there was no stone left unturned I think that night I think that was good to see that, and then finally, last but not least I think we should have a conversation uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna talk a little bit about the the budget process be coming up uh, next month we'll be we'll be getting into that discussion again and then. Talk a little about the, the philosophy. My, my philosophy about how I like to present the budget. Um, I certainly want the, the, the board to have provide me with some input and direction as to what they think is important. Um, but um, knowing for well that the process, the budget is a document that I produce uh, on behalf of the town. But I, I certainly like as much uh, reaction, uh, our thoughts and ideas from the board as to what they like to see as is is uh, ideas and things that should be included in the budget as well. All right, so so we'll be hearing from that next month, and I think that's it. I certainly want to welcome my new my new colleague uh, to my right, who is going to be a huge help to me. Uh, I've already given her way more work than she wants <laughs> than she bargained for. So, but uh, but great. she's she's up to, she's up to the she's up to the task as she's as I thought she would be. So that's it. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So we just have a couple more action items to go through. Oh. Um, yeah, the um, we have the warrant for the state election, and I guess 
we have to approve it. So I move that the board of selectmen accept the warrant for the state election as written. I'll second that. All those in favor? Uh, the last item is the um, approval of a coin-operated pool table license. This is for the uh, American Legion. Um, so I move that the uh, Board of Selectmen approve the application for a coin-operated billiard slash pool table for the Foster American Legion post, and it expires in May 1, 2015. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 That's it for uh, action items. Mm. Uh, I think that's it. Can I have a motion to adjourn, please? Uh, I'll make a motion that the Court of Selectmen adjourn. I'll second oh. the motion. Wait a minute. Oh, can I just, sure. in the information we have um, from the Southeastern Regional School District, it's a Warren article in regard to the stabilization, stabilization fund mm, that they right. um, yeah. 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 And I think that's we have to approve it, but that that should be the first item on the well, annual, annual town annual meeting. Town. I mean, I've actually spoken okay. to the superintendent about that. Yeah, they, they, yeah, they, they gave came us a heads up on that yeah. Yeah. yeah, but that should be the first for the, for the new list. I've about that as well, so he's aware that that's coming too. Yeah. Okay. All those in favor? Okay. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Thank you.